everyone and welcome to another math tutorial. In this video we're going to continue our discussion on the chain rule in calculus and I'm going to show you some problems where we have to do the chain rule more than once. So kind of a repeated chain rule. Uh, so it's not just a function within a function but maybe a function within a function within another function. So uh, we're going to see kind of multiple layers um, of these compositions of functions. So let's go ahead and jump right into the first example problem. Okay, first problem, we want to find the derivative of sine cubed x to the fourth. Now we've seen problems like this before where we have the trig function being raised to the power. And my recommendation is that you rewrite this. This is the same as sine x to the fourth all raised to the third power, okay? And when I see it like this, right, when I rewrite that power, I know that this is the outer function. So I have to do that power first. And that makes this whole thing the inner function, right? But if I just look at this by itself, right, if I, if I only had that, well, then I look at that and I see x to the fourth is inside of sine. So it's almost like we have an inner, inner function. I don't know if that's a thing, but we just made it a thing, right? We have like an inner, inner function. So, you know, layer-wise, step-wise, I have to do this first, the derivative of this power first, and then I'm going to do the derivative of the sine, and then I'm going to do the derivative of the x to the fourth. So we just kind of think about this as like just peeling back the layers, okay? Peel back as many layers as you can, and as you get to a, a further interior layer, uh, then you just keep differentiating kind of as you go. So let's go ahead and begin this derivative. Y prime, I'm gonna start with the power. So three comes to the front, and when I do that, everything inside stays. So sine x to the fourth, and that power becomes two. So that's the first part, that's done. Now I'm gonna multiply this by the derivative of sine x to the fourth. And just within that, the sine is the outer. So the derivative of sine is cosine. And as I do that derivative, I keep its inside the same, okay? That's done. Now I'm going to move to the furthest inside, which is the x to the fourth. And the derivative of x to the fourth is 4x cubed, and that one's done. All right, so there's my derivative done. Now I'm going to do is clean it up. And when I clean it up, I like to take any sort of numerical or uh, polynomial factor, and I'm just going to move it all together to the front. I am going to rewrite this power so that it looks like it did originally. And so all in one step, I'm gonna rewrite this to be y equals 12x to the third, and then I'm gonna have sine squared x to the fourth, and then cosine x to the fourth. I consider that simplified and finished. Okay, our next example problem, we have y equals the tangent of e raised to the x squared. So here we've got this trig function, it is the outer function. The e raised to the x squared is the inner function. You know, but notice that this e to the x squared, it's not just e to the x, it's itself has an inner function. I'm just gonna call this the inner inner again. I don't know, again, I don't think that's a thing. I think I just made that up. But it's like, we got this layer, next to, after the tangent, we're gonna to move to the E layer. And then after the E layer, we're gonna to move to the X squared layer. So we're just working our way from the outside, we're gonna go inside, we're gonna go inside even more as we go, okay? So let's go ahead and begin this derivative. And we're gonna start with the, the tangent. So the derivative of tangent is secant squared. And when I do that tangent's derivative on the outside, the inside 
just stays as it is. Now we need to multiply by the derivative of e raised to the x squared. And as you know, the derivative of uh, an, an e is itself just e. So we've got e to the x squared. Now we need to multiply that by the derivative of the x squared, which is 2x. All right, cleaning this up, uh, I'm gonna move this 2x to the front. I think I'm gonna move this e to the x squared to the front as well. I like everything in front of the trig functions if there are trig functions. So I'm gonna call y prime 2x e to the x squared secant squared e to the x squared. I think that's all finished. Okay, the final example problem in this video uh, starts us with a radical function. We have a square root, and with that radical, we're going to rewrite that as always. So this rewrite rewrites to be y equals x squared plus e to the negative 5x raised to the 1 half power. Okay, so I think we're ready to just jump right into the derivative of this. Uh, that 1 half power is on the outside, so I'm going to start with that. So I have one half on the inside, we have x squared plus e to the negative 5x. So we didn't change that, and then we're gonna subtract one from that power to be negative half. Now we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside, and the inside's derivative, so just do each of these terms separately. So x squared becomes 2x, and then e to the negative 5x is going to be itself e to the negative 5x, but then here's our extra chain rule. We have to multiply e to the negative 5x by the derivative of its power, which is negative 5. All right, so there's our calculus done. Uh, let's go ahead and see what we can do to, to clean this up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move uh, just this to the front right here. Um, let's see where this goes. Y prime equals half quantity. I've got x squared plus e to the negative 5x to the negative half times 2x minus 5e to the negative 5x like so. Um, I want to put all of this, this negative half power, I want to move it all to the denominator. Uh, this whole thing right here can multiply up to the numerator where the one is. So if I do all that, we are going to have this big fraction. We're going to have on top one times all of this. So just this 2x minus 5e to the negative 5x. And the denominator is going to be that two from the one half, and then this x squared plus e to the negative five x. That's now to the positive half power. Uh, I'm gonna change that positive half back into a square root. So y prime is going to be two x minus five e to the negative five x divided by two square root x squared plus e to the negative five x. That's it. All right, if you have any comments or questions, uh, specifically questions on any of the problems, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. Uh, if you think this video has helped you out in any way, uh, I encourage you to give the video a thumbs up to help support the channel. Um, I want to thank you for, for tuning in and watching, and I'll see you in the next video.